Good afternoon, this is Carolyn in Scrapbooking with a Twist, and we're going to do some more base pages today. I'm going to try to get three done. I keep saying that, and then I end up doing two because I'm so slow at it, but I'm going to try to get three done today. This one, um, evidently, I know I've used this paper before, not this one, but the flowered one, and um, so I had... Like I had these little things fussy cut, and so I've got a small piece I'm still gonna fussy cut out of uh, to add to this. So let me kind of uh, clear the decks here. I've got, I have some things that I had cut for something else that I didn't use, and they match this, and so I'm gonna keep those here to use to put in would probably not use today, to, but to put in with this. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna make a page. This is, um, I, don't, I don't even know where this came from. I didn't, I don't, I did not use these two together last time. I think I just did this with the blue last time. I'm gonna have to look that up and see whose scrapbook it's in so that I don't use, um, if they're too much alike so that I don't use them, but that shouldn't be a problem. But I think I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna mat it on some white. This wasn't quite 12 inches, so I'm gonna, um, I cut it to the same size so that they'd already be the same length, and I think I'm gonna mat it. But I wanna do something first. I'm gonna show you a little tool, a little toy that I have that I play with occasionally. This is an old Creative Memories uh, border maker. And I'm gonna, I don't know if you've ever seen it before, but you get these, I don't know what you would even call these, and then this little thing that makes them a punch. And so you insert this in here, and you can see this, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it has bubbles on it. I have several of these, and, um, it's just a punch system, basically. And then it turns that thing you just put in there into a punch. And it will make, and it's for borders. So this, I don't have a full strip. So I'm gonna do this and then I'll bake, I'll cut it and use it whatever length I need and, uh, and cover it with a picture. But the way you do this, or the way I've done it, I'm not sure it's the right way, this little, see these little things? They fit in some grooves right here. And so you put that in those grooves. And then you put this in there. And slide it till it hits the back. And then you know you have it loaded correctly. And then that has a little, I guess, magnet on it. And then you just start punching. You just punch, and then you it will slide, and then it'll fit in the next place it needs to be, and then it will slide, fit in the next place it needs to be, until you reach the end of your paper. And I probably need to do it one more time just to finish out that. And so you have, and I'm actually going to save these little circles that it's cutting out just in case I want to uh, like use them sort of like enamel dots or something. If not, I'll just throw them away. But for now, I'm going to save them. And then I think that I'm going to turn this over and do it down this side also. Then that would give me, if I wanted to splice it or if I wanted to use it along the edge of a photo, I would have that option. So let's get that in there. Push it as far as it will go. I don't know why this makes that noise, but it does. It's kind of hard to click down. I don't think it always did that. So let's do this again. I've got several of the little, I'm gonna call them cartridges for lack of anything else to call them, that fit in this. Like I have a one that's hearts. I have one that's a little picket fence. Um, I don't even remember what all I've got, but I have several of them. So that gives us some options on that. Okay, let's set that aside. And let's, whoops, I guess she thinks, uh-uh, no, no, Mace, no, no. I guess she thinks she hears something. 
Maisie, no, no. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside. Now we have our border and we have our papers. And I'm gonna put this one under this one, I think. But I'm thinking that I want to cut my border and stick it in between there. So I'm just going to kind of cut it about where I think the middle is. It doesn't really matter because it's gonna be tucked in there. I was thinking that I would just do something like that along that edge. Cause it's got those different sized dots in it and these are different size. I just kind of thought that made it look good together. So if I cut this, um, then I could put some up here. Then I can be sure that I get a picture over the gapped area and, um, and I'm good to go. So the best place to cut this seems to be right along that three. So I'm gonna cut it here. There's not much area that you can cut it and you're not cutting into a circle. So let's see if we can cut it without actually cutting into a circle. Yep, I think we did, I think we did. I need to straighten this one up so that it can go along that edge. This one looks like I can probably cut right there also. Okay. Now then, if we go ahead and put this on here where we think we want it. Now I could cut some of this off so that it's not so wide. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should do that just so that it's not quite so wide. Let's see if we can, I don't know. Hmm. See if we can line that up and get it right where we want it. I don't have my glasses on. Why would I think I could see that? Um, I think that's about it. I think I'm going to have to use my washi tape trick on that to hold it in place to cut that. Sure, we got it lined up again. Okay. Get that. Now let's see how that falls. That looks pretty good. All right, now we've gotten some of that off and it won't be quite as thick out there where we're trying to line it up. Maybe that'll be better. I think it will be. So I want this up here, something like that and then this down here, and then I'll be sure that I have a picture there. Because I didn't have, I just dug out scraps. This is all scraps. Now the white sheet that I'm gonna back it with was, uh, I think it was actually out of one of my page protectors. You know how those white pages come in page protectors? I think that I think that is what it was. I save those to use like for when I'm making frames and things like that. Okay, so let's see if we can get this on there. A little over, there we go. 
That looks pretty good. Okay. Yep, that looks pretty good. Now let's try to get this end on. Okay, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Then we can concentrate on getting these together. Now this is, I think this is gonna be about 11 and a quarter. And then um, that gives me a pretty good size edge to put my frame on. So let's kind of get this squared up on my mat here so I can sort of tell what I'm doing. And we will put a line of glue there. We may go back and reinforce it some, but that gets that pretty good. Then let's turn it around so that we're measuring where we can actually see. And that looks good. Now I may have to do a little trimming here. That's okay. They weren't exactly the same, but that's okay. Let's see if we can get in under here. Get our line of glue down. sure I didn't slip that any. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right. And then I may tuck, so I'm not going to glue that anymore. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And then um, I've got my frame that I had cut out of the white and let's get it on the frame. It isn't the actual, it, normally I do a half inch with about a quarter inch frame, but since this was an odd size, I think I need to even this up before we do that though. I could have inked that edge and it probably would have looked better, but I didn't, so we won't. That looks good. Okay, now that's all evened up. And we have our frame. So let's see if we can get that down. Seems like I'm framing several of these, but when I'm using scraps and they're not all the exact same size and length and all that kind of stuff, frames can kind of help make those work. Let's close this glue up. I'm not going to glue that frame. I'm going to tape it. Just have to be kind of careful sometimes with those white sheets that come out of um, page protectors. They're very <laughs> low quality paper and they will just kind of tear up. That does not look straight. Does not look straight to me. You know, another trick I learned, if you will take the back piece off of the top piece, it won't roll up. See how that didn't roll up? Whereas if you take the top piece off of the back piece, it rolls up. 
and you get, then, I mean, you, it's not like you can't unroll it, but it's a lot harder to use, harder to straighten out. I may have to stand up to get this straight. Especially since it's kind of a weird size. And it may just not be straight. <laughs> that just may be all there is to it. Yeah, I think it may just not be totally straight. I'm going to declare that as straight as it's going to get. We're going to use it no matter what it is. Okay. We're going to use it. All right, so we've got that done. Now we can work our way around. Getting that first edge down is the is the hard part. And we can work our way around. Now we've got our frame done. Okay. We can use this any direction. We can do, like, I can use it this way. We can use it any direction we want to. And that's basically the, um, that's basically the base page right there. And then I found this end stuff that I'm going to toss in there. I already had these little flowers, some of them fussy cut, and they're just pieces, some of them, that evidently I had used. I found this also. But I like this one better. This one's darker and just not as not just exactly right. And then I have all of these pieces. And of course, we've got this. So if we want to put something in like along a photo, we've got extra of that. And then I have um, I found these frames, and I liked these two colors. So I could cut that frame if I wanted to and do something with it. So, and there were two of them. There were two of those frames. So I could, um, you know, I could even do something, you know, like that. So anyway, I'm gonna toss those in there. And then this is the little piece that I had left over. And I'm gonna toss it in there and that way if I wanna fussy cut some of those flowers. These are just the two little strips that I had left of the two pieces of paper. Doubt that I'll use them, but I'm going to toss them in there. And then these are all of the little uh, scraps that I had that I could use for this. This one is a little bit different color, but it is the color of these. So I'm going to toss it in there in case I need some more. And then here are all these different pieces. Then this is the white that I gutted the frame with, so I'm going to leave it in there, and that gives me some options uh, to use for when I do my layout. I have no idea what pictures or anything are going to go on this, but I do have a base page. So there's one. One down. Okay, the next one I'm going to do is, um, let's see if I can get this. Um, over here. And while I'm kind of uh, sorting this, I want to do the I want to do the twist right quick. I don't even have anything written down for it today. It was a thing I read on the internet the other day, and it said, you're not obligated to believe me when I tell you about the gospel or the Lord or, or whatever about God, but I am obligated to tell you. And so, that's, I thought, you know, that's pretty, that's a pretty powerful thought. It's not up to us whether the people that we tell believe it. That's not our job. Our job is to tell. And so if I'm telling, then I'm doing what the Lord expects me to do. And then the rest of it's on them. If they don't believe, if they won't listen, if they won't react, if, you know, then that's on them. But the Lord told me, to tell. Go out and tell. That's that's our instruction. And so I thought that was a pretty neat um, thing out there on, on Facebook where I found it. Okay, so this one, I am going to uh, do something like that 
and this. So let's go ahead and get this part of our base done. And I am thinking I may ink the edge of this because this one gets kind of lost. So this, this is a neat, um, a neat piece of paper. This came in a thing called Dots and Stripes from Echo Park, and it was just, it had polka dots, small stripes, big stripes, little polka dots, big stripe, polka dots, small stripes, big stripes. And I have used a ton of it over the few years that I have had it. Oops, I didn't get my thing in. There. So let's get the, and on this one, I think I like the smaller stripe better. So let's get our branding strip cut out, cut off. And get it. And this is a, I got a bunch of these. I was, I made some cards. I may even made, a, I may even use this even on a Christmas card. But anyway, so I had a bunch of these. Like I bought 20 or 30 sheets. And I still have a few of them. And I've been using them. It's kind of lightweight paper. It's just a paper studio. But it, um, yes, it's just a paper studio. But it is, um, I've enjoyed it. It works, it works as a solid. And so I use it a lot. Let's, um, let's just use some tape runner on this and I'm not going to tape it all the way up to the top edge in case I want to do some tucking whoops that tape runner just said no mo I didn't check it before I started videoing all right so let's just get this down Okay, so there's that. You know what? No, I'm not gonna ink that one because I'm gonna put something along there. If I decide to ink it, there should be room though. There should be plenty of room because I am going to, um, I'm gonna put something along. You know me, I really like things along where my papers meet. And this was in, both of these were in my Pringles can. And this one was already torn. I probably tore two or three and then just didn't use them all. So I wanna see which one I like the best. I really like torn edges. So I may use that one. I also like this one. But I really think I like that one. And this one is even not as good a blue. It has has just a tiny bit of the purple blue look to it. So I think I'm going to save that one for another time. So I think I will use that. But I've got to decide about inking these edges. So let's see. Um, where is, this is the one I like. This is a, I really like, it's a close to my heart, and it's called Outdoor Denim. <clears throat> and it's just a true denim-y blue. It's not the royal, because this is definitely not like a royal blue. So, oops, I just caught ink on there, sure enough. I'll have to cover it with a photo. I'm always doing stuff like that. So, I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges of this. Not super, super heavy or deep, but enough that I get a, I just get a, a thing that says your paper ends here. That's kind of what, on these really light sheets, I just feel like they melt away and you don't really have that boundary. And so I like the inking on them. And this outdoor denim is just a really good, I like the distress inks, like the, whatever it is, sapphire and everything, but 
it's really a little bold for me sometimes, depending on what I want to do. And this outdoor denim is just that real, um, it's got a little bit more muted color, but it, it's, it's deep and I like it. And these close to my heart inks are so, so old. I bet they're 15 or 20 years old anyway, and some of them are still just working like a charm. I guess when they run out, I'm just going to have to toss them because there won't be any re-inkers or anything. I'm thinking I am going to have to ink that. I'm an inker, and I admit it. I know, I've said that on my videos for years. I just feel like it adds a little bit of a finished touch. And I, I don't like to use the word professional because there's nothing professional about what I do. But I just think it adds a, a little bit of a, a classy touch sometimes, maybe. Or a finished, like it has a, you know, a, a better finish on it. I don't know, but I, I do ink a lot to be careful not to get it on that page. I really should have done this before, but that's the story of my life. Almost done with this. Good thing I left that boundary there, that border of not um, putting the tape runner on it or I wouldn't have been able to go back and do that. Okay, so we're finished with that for right now. I'll probably use it again in a minute. All right, let me I probably scooch that out of frame. All right, so now let's go ahead and get this piece tucked under there. You know, I think I'll use glue on this. It might give me a little bit of wiggle room. Another thing about doing these base pages, I have using scraps for sure. I'm really trying to use some bigger pieces of scraps and then match them with smaller pieces. But I'm using things out of my Pringles can and I love it. Okay. When I do a layout and I haven't done a base page like this, I mean, I have a tendency to go to whole pieces of paper. And so I... Depending on how this goes, when I start trying to put pictures with it, I am I may be kind of sold on this idea of base pages. Okay, so I think that's a good base page just in itself, but I do have a little bit more planned for it. I had this, and I liked the colors of it. Like I said, I'll just put something down there because that's not where I'm planning on putting this. I really liked this. It's been in... My, I have a drawer where I have frames and tags. If you watched my Get Organized video, you saw that drawer. And this has been in that drawer. I don't even know for how long. It is a uh, Tinglings. I've never even heard of that. Carolee's Creations. And it's called at www.tinglings.com. So I have no idea how old it even is. But I thought the colors were perfect with it. It would even allow me to bring in like a little yellow if I needed a sunshine. This would be a good water picture if I needed it. And so, um, anyway, I'm gonna, I am gonna trim. It's got kind of a um, white border around it. And I am gonna trim that down just a little, just so that it doesn't have quite as big a white border around it. But other than that, and I'm going to back it with some blue, with one of these blues that's in it. So this is kind of a, a monochromatic theme going here, but I like it. I'm not sure how many um, base pages I have done. I think this is my fourth video. So I probably have eight maybe done because I don't move very fast on them, as you well know. And I think I maybe have just done two on each video. So here's another just scrap that I have. 
and I wanted to just frame this, but I do believe I'm gonna ink it before I frame it. So let's just make it kind of match the outside of our outside of our base page. Give it a little finishing touch. I know I said this over and over, but I love this blue. This outdoor denim is what it's called. You might even be, it's an old color. I don't even know if it's a, a current color or not. They probably have one that um, corresponds to it. But like I said, I bought a whole set of close to my heart inks, ink pads. These, I mean, they're the full size ink pads. My friend, uh, the business where she was working, they were having a, a garage sale, like a Main Street garage sale. And you could set up booths and or have it at your business or people could use your parking lot. It was really cool. Anyway, the place where she worked was doing it. And one of the girls she worked with had all of this close to my heart stuff that she was selling. She said, oh, I got into it. I was going to make all these cards and I was going to do everything. And I bought all this stuff and I never did it. I just need to sell it. And so my friend called me and she said, you can't believe what all she's got. Well, she had this entire set of ink pads and there probably weren't three of them that had even been opened. They were still in the cellophane. And that plus some other stuff. And I bought it all like for $25. It was amazing. And so <laughs> I've been using them for years. And like I said, they're, they're, um, I've had a few that have run out and I didn't even really look to see if I could get re-inkers because I was pretty much getting to use the, I should have refilled tape runners before I started this because I was starting to use the distress inks and I liked them. And uh, so I will, I will, I'll just finish this off with the glue. I should have checked my tape runner before I started this. I don't want a wide frame. I just want a little bit of a frame around this. And then we're just gonna cut it down and mount it up there. I think I want it up here and I'm just gonna barely stick it down because I don't know if I'm gonna want it like this or like this depending on the picture so I'm just going to um, you know what I'm not gonna stick it down at all I'm just gonna leave it in there knowing that because I could put it here <laughs> and cover that and then I wouldn't have to worry about that and then do more pictures, title, whatever I wanna do. Now I have, I don't have a whole lot to throw in with this. I had this strip, I'll have these leftovers. I had this and this, which matches that and don't really, so I'll have to look for some things to go with that. But there's number two, I'm on a streak, girls. And I'm very quickly gonna, this last one is like, nothing. It's kind of like cheating. This was a cut file, again, and some stuff that I got at a garage sale. Um, a lady had passed away, and they had this huge garage sale, like a state sale, and they had like a whole room of scrapbooking stuff. I kid you not. 
she and she had some gorgeous stuff some good collections or parts of collections you know that she had used and just some really cool stuff well this cut file was in with that there was another there were two cut files in all of that stuff and i have i kind of cut them apart and didn't use the whole page as a cut file and so this is what i have left i'm not i don't know if i have any more of these flowers left or not i've used some of them individually and uh, i don't think i may not have anything else but i really think i am just going to put this in the middle of the page if i wanted to do like an you know maybe a five by seven it would fit there if i wanted to do a four by six or a five by seven that ran the other way, I could do it there. I could do pictures in all four corners and do a title across there. So I think, and it's gonna have to be a girly layout. It isn't gonna be one with my grandsons with, I don't, I bet you can't see this paper, but it's absolutely beautiful. It's, um, I just cut the branding strip off. What was it? What did I do with that branding strip? Uh-oh. I think it's an SEI, but I don't know. Yes, I don't even think SEI exists anymore. But this was in a, a big pack of paper that I got at Scrapbook Convention several years ago. It's called White Elegance, and it is absolutely beautiful. It has, um, I don't know if it's white. It almost seems like it has a pink tone to it. I don't know if you can see it or not. And it's it's got a gloss to it, which I don't normally use glossy. Then it has this lacy, it's just beautiful. And it's perfect. The lacy pattern in it, to me, is just perfect with these flowers. And I thought about running it this way, running it diagonally. But I, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm just going to do that. And I am going to, um, you know what? I am going to mark where the center of this page is very lightly so that I know where to put it. Find a pencil. And there is the center. And there is the center so that I get it on there straight and then I can I can uh, erase those so I'm just going to use my Nuvo and get this down that's a really quick and easy base page I have a I have some of the other cup file that was in all that garage sale stuff too it's a green, and I've used some of it before. And depending on what I find for my base pages, I may use it also. You know, I just thought of something that I think I have in a drawer that I might like with this, too, for an embellishment. So I'm going to have to remember to pull that out and see. A lot of gluing to do here to get all of these kind of down they don't have to all just have glue everywhere but I want I don't want the edges coming up but they are kind of wide so it makes it easy sometimes on those really thin delicate cut files it's hard to get your glue on them and then not make a mess but this one I just hope it doesn't dry before I can get it down. I'm hurrying as quickly as I can. This glue dries pretty fast, which is a good thing, but okay. All right, let's see if we can get this down.
Okay, there's my mark. And there's my mark. And there is my cup file. And that is the space page. That's how it's gonna be. So look at me go, girl. I did three today, finally. And let's erase those little marks. No one will ever know they were there. And we got three base pages done. Thank you so much for dropping by. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I hope you'll subscribe. And I hope you have a blessed day and be a blessing to someone else. Bye-bye.